Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Ahmed Mawar aka Mr. Middlepath and it's very hot outside so I'm not wearing my regular shirt but anyways guys this video is how to quit weed and weed is very much different than the other series that I did which was how to quit pornography pornography being a private drug or a private addiction and marijuana and weed use being very much a social thing even people who do it alone they still have friends that do it as well and there is a lifestyle that goes with it so to quit weed it's 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 one easy step right you you, you have to quit the lifestyle and you have to leave behind everyone who does it and maybe maybe in the future when you become strong you can talk to them again and you can hang out with them again in a blue moon once in a blue moon and when I say once in a blue moon I, I don't mean once in a week or once in a month I mean once in a year if that if you wanna reconnect with your old friends for the purpose of of helping them out but in the beginning stages you you must focus on yourself you must leave behind your friends because you're not gonna pull them to do better they're gonna pull you to go down so you you have to cut them off and there could be multiple different ways of doing it, as hard as that is right so you might not want to do it you might say hey I have some good times with them these were good people that have helped me out when I'm in need However, if you're trying to go to the next level, you have to understand that you have to leave the people behind. It's not that you're leaving them behind, it's that they're falling behind and you're moving forward. And, and you can't have someone, you, you can't have someone manipulate you into staying into a bad relationship based on previous favors or, or guilt, or guilt tripping you or you guilt tripping yourself into certain emotions that aren't good for you, right? You have to, you have to be logical in the situation. What benefit do these friends have for you? Can you develop that same relationship with someone who can get you to the next level instead of someone who's holding you back from getting to the next level? So in the case of uh, weed smoking friends, you may have to go hardcore and just say, please you know, don't talk to me anymore. I'm trying to quit weed. I'm trying to leave it behind. I can't hang out with you anymore. Please understand. And that is the best way to do it. Most people won't do that. They're going to kind of uh, beat around the bush, ignore phone calls, and just hope that the other guy gets the hint and say, oh, I'm busy, I can't really hang out anymore. And most people are going to do that because they don't want to hurt any other, anyone else's feelings. But most people, especially if you're at a younger age, you're going to have to do something like that and just cut the person off hardcore and just be like, hey, I can't. You don't have to say, F you, don't ever talk to me again. But you can say, look, I'm trying to stop smoking weed. We can't hang out anymore. I, I'm sorry. That's it, you know, like, uh, you're still my friend, I still love you, but I'm, I'm not gonna hang out with you anymore. If you wanna quit weed, that's cool, but I mean, I don't wanna hang out with you, even if you're not high, because you are smoking weed and I really need to quit. And that's very important. You can't hang out with the people that smoke weed, even if they're not smoking right then and there, because the lifestyle and the influence and the ideas that they have are still there and they're still influencing you. You, you really have to, like if there's like a, a worm in your body, you have to like rip it out of your stomach, right? Just rip it out and throw it away. Now, what if someone is your brother or a close relative? Then you have to leave the environment. And what I mean is don't be in the house when they're doing it. Lock yourself in your room when they're doing it, even if, and, and let them go to the other room. And, and be a little bit assertive, right? It's your right to at least your living space, like your room that you don't have what you don't want in that living space. So you, you tell them you go to your room and if you have share the same room, leave, right? Leave, so, and, and just come back later when they're done. That's if you have to deal with that. And it's difficult at first, and it takes a few months to really start seeing the positive changes. And you will notice that in the future, after quitting for a long time, those old friends, who might have held you back from quitting will look up to you and will respect you for what you have done and even though you're not hanging out with them anymore when they speak of you they won't speak of you in negative terms they might make fun of you in the beginning like oh why are you doing this why are you quitting uh, are you a loser only losers quit something like that but in the future like man you know he really quit maybe I should quit too you know and and you will have a positive effect on your environment just by doing but but the whole lifestyle that comes with weed there's a whole like aqida and ideology that comes with smoking weed or doing different types of psychedelic drugs and, and you really have to separate yourself from that that is that is the number one thing you can do weed offers two things right euphoria 
a false sense of spirituality. And of course, the side effects are, and, and most psychedelic drugs do the same thing, and the side effects are lethargy or laziness and, and like being slow or, or being low, right? So you have the euphoria, you have to, when you're no longer getting the euphoria, euphoria from the weed or the psychedelic drug, you have to get the euphoria from something else. And that could be anything really, a hobby, a job, sports that you play, right? And no, if your friends who smoke weed go smoke weed and play basketball, you cannot play basketball with them. You have to play basketball or sports with people that are sober. And you have to find some activity that gets you that euphoria without the weed, right? And people will say, oh, well, the weed will enhance my euphoria. It will enhance the feelings of, of me feeling better. Yes, but you will enhance your performance without the weed and the success, right? So, so the euphoria you get naturally, you get euphoria when you're successful at something. So when you get the euphoria without the success or the hard work that comes with it, you're not motivating yourself to be successful. So find something that is hard and difficult, but that you like, so that you can actually take the time and effort to learn it and to master it, right? And, and there's so many different things that you can try and do that can take the place of weed. As long as the sense of euphoria that you get, the sense of euphoria that you get is, is, is there, right? It has to be something that you like. Like if you're forcing yourself to do it, right? That's probably not a good sign. Your body is telling you, I don't like this. But if you're staying up long nights to do something that you like, that's probably a good sign that this activity or that activity could be a very good and suitable replacement for marijuana or, or any psychedelic drug. Next, next is the false sense of spirituality. So I mentioned in other videos how weed kind of and psychedelic drugs gives you a false sense of spirituality or a false sense of spiritual growth. And I gave the example of, you know, certain bugs that like, like a bug that will look like an ant and it'll copy the ant and it'll use its antenna to kind of communicate with the ants and then it'll go inside the ant's home, the ant tunnel. And it's not an ant, it's a different bug. But it looks like an ant and it copies the ants to trick them and goes inside their home and it starts eating the babies and eating the eggs. So you have bugs like that. And, and weed and, and psychedelic drugs are kind of like that insect. It copies spiritual growth. It mimics some of the effects of spiritual growth in your mind, but it, it doesn't actually give you spiritual advancement. So you need to actually develop a closer personal relationship with Allah. If you are not a Muslim, you should be one. Huh? Huh? No, and if, if you're not a Muslim, I can't really speak on how you develop your spiritual growth. But if you are a Muslim, uh, then the way to attain spiritual growth is by copying the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu exactly in what he does. And there's so many different things. Really, Allah just wants you to be an honest person and to copy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And there's things that you should do, things that are good to do, and then things that are very good to do. And, and you try and climb that ladder by doing these things and by trying to attain uh, peace of mind uh, or, or focus, right? Focus in the mind will lead to uh, khushua or, or or openness in the heart and the highest level of, of, of Islam or the highest level of this religion is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see him right knowing that we can't really see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world and if you cannot see him knowing that he always sees you so someone who's praying to God without that understanding might not be paying attention might not be focused and all of us are you know all of us have that but someone who's attained that level and it's a very difficult level to reach will not be distracted for a second in his prayer. He'll be completely drowning in the, in, in the, uh, in the emotional connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's a whole nother series, inshallah, on how to develop a close personal relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another thing is to, because weed makes you, and psychedelic drugs also makes you think about things in different ways. And you need to leave that behind as well. And think about, different things from reading books, looking at the stories of people in the past who have gone through struggles and who have gone through hurdles and this could be, you know, certain uh, wise people in the past, certain companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi stories of the Prophets themselves, people who, what I find very interesting is the medieval times, people who weren't around during the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi or any of their Prophets, so they didn't have direct spiritual guidance, they only had 
uh, the community and their books and their te and, and the teachings, but they might not have specifically had a mentor. Or everyone had a mentor, but they might not. You know what I mean? They didn't have a mentor like the way the people during the time of the Prophet, peace be upon them, had a mentor. And then how they acted, right? So this would be like 500, 600 years before for stories like Salah ad and other stories. These are, these are very good stories to look at that enhance your spiritual growth and it'll enhance your mentality for success. And it'll give you... It'll let you think about things from a unique perspective, right? Reading on this history and philosophy and developing a close spiritual relationship with Allah and finding uh, some ways that you can uh, get that euphoria and that, um, that, that, that mental feeling of happiness that comes from being successful at something to find a good hobby that would, or habit that replaces the, the weed that's positive and that helps you grow. Another thing is developing close friends. So because you're high and because you're feeling euphoria when you smoke weed, that euphoria makes you have a sense of closeness with the people that are around you. So when you're making new friends, you might feel to yourself, hey, these new friends, I don't feel the same way about them that I feel when I was smoking weed. Well, then that means that just means that and that's an indication for you to start doing activities that are halal, that produce that same sense of happiness and success and you will share that feeling of happiness and success with those other new friends around you and in so doing you will solidify your new friendships okay or your new friendship yeah your new friendships with other people so that's the video guys inshallah let me know if you have any comments or questions below this was very simple and much easier than other uh, habits it's something very simple to do but it's also something very difficult to do because our environment is so powerful so to sum it all up right make leave your old friends behind find something that replaces these activities that you were doing before that produces a sense of euphoria something that you're interested in and something that takes some effort to, to do so that you can feel uh, the happiness when you become successful at it three to develop an actual genuine close spiritual relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala such that you don't need to have things that copy that effect or mimic that effect in a, in a false way and four and four was to uh, start reading books and start reading on the lives of previous people to enhance and expand your mind uh, and get different points of view and then five finally is to make new friends and uh, start doing activities with them that require success that can that require effort so that when you feel successful, you can share that sense of success with them and solidify the new friendship, right? Take care, guys. Peace out. Assalamu alaikum.